Okay, in this video, we're going to go through some um, some basic trigonometric identities. We'll start off with a really simple one, which starts with looking at the unit circle and some information about the unit circle that we are already aware of. So let's say I take an angle theta from the origin like so. There it is. I'll make it a bit longer. And it's one unit in length. Then we know from our work that the coordinates of that particular point are cos theta, sine theta. So the x coordinate is cos theta and the y coordinate is sine theta. Now what that means then is that if we create a right angle triangle here, that the length between the origin and this point here is cos theta and the length upways will be sine theta. Now Pythagoras' theorem says that this length squared plus this length squared has to equal this length squared. So we've got a bit later this length squared plus this length squared has to equal the hypotenuse squared. Now Cos theta all squared is a bit of a clunky way of writing it. So there's a notation which says we simply put the square between the word and the angle. So cos squared theta, both of these things mean the same thing. And sine squared theta is equal to one squared, which is just one. So this is called um, a Pythagorean identity. And um, it simply means, when you see the word identity, it simply means that it's true for all possible angles. Now, technically, I've only shown it to you for this acute angle here, but if theta is all the way over here, we can do it here with theta hat and so on. So it does it does work out, but it's just that I'm not going to go through every single possible case. Okay, so that's one identity. I'll summarise them at the end. Second one you're already familiar with, but I'll just uh, write it in... Um, for posterity's sake, and that is that we know that tan theta is described as the rise over the run. Since the rise is always given by sine theta, the y coordinate, and the run is always given by cos theta, the x coordinate, then it follows that tan theta always, always, always equals sine theta over cos theta. And in previous years, you've probably seen this identity from looking at right angle trig. The next one is called the double angle identities. We're going to be interested in looking at the cosine and sine identities. There's also a tan double angle identity as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by having a look at the unit circle. And that's a bit dodgy, but that's okay. That has angle theta here and length one. And this would have um, length, sorry, coordinates, cos theta and sine theta as the x, y coordinate. Now, if I go symmetrically down here to ang at an angle of theta, so the size of the angle is theta, then the coordinates here would be cos negative theta, sine negative theta. Okay, so that's the setup. Unit one, let's call this point A, let's call this point B, let's call this point C. Okay, so if we look at the length of um, oh, and let's call this point D. Okay, so by the way we've constructed it, this length here, CD, is going to be the same as this length here, BD. And so we have BD equaling CD, which is equal to sine theta. So what does that mean? It means that 
BC, so the length of the whole line would be equal to the length of those two short lines, BD and then CD. And since BD and CD are the same length, it means that they are both sine theta, which means that if you add them together, you get two sine theta. Okay, so that's the first setup. The second thing is, if we look at angle BAC, okay, so that's BAC, it's this double angle here, the size of the angle. We can see the angle BAC would be equal to 2 theta. Okay, let's use the cosine rule to see what happens here then. The length of BC squared is going to be equal to the length of AB squared plus the length of AC squared minus twice the length of AB, AC, and then the cosine of 2 theta. So that's just the cosine rule. Okay, straightforward cosine rule. Now, what does that mean? It means that BC squared, well, the length of AB is 1, so we've got 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times 1 times cos 2 theta. So that's equal to 2, 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, minus twice cos 2 theta. That's what B squared is equal to, and so BC is equal to the square root of 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta. But up the top here, we saw that BC is actually 2 sine theta. And so that means that this is 2 sine theta equaling the square root of 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta, like so. And if we square both sides, we'll get to get rid of the square root, that would leave us with 4 sine squared theta. Using that notation as well, the square goes between the sine and the theta is equal to 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta. Nearly there. I'm going to squish it onto this part of the page so we can see it. So if I divide um, everything through by 2, I will get 2 sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos 2 theta. And now I'm going to rearrange it so that the cos 2 theta is on the left. And I get cos 2 theta on the left. And that would leave me with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta on the right. And there we have it. That's the identity for cos 2 theta. The reason why it's powerful is because we've now got a and uh, a, a double angle split into a single angle. So we can start with a double angle, like the cos of 120, and finish with the sine of 60, which is um, an angle we can work out. So there's a bit of power there. Okay, there's a few other things we can use to rearrange. So I'll do that on the next page. So I'll just write down the formula again so we've got it. Cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, so if we start off with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1, then we can see that sine squared theta must be equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay, so if we substitute in, that means that cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 times by 1 minus cos squared theta. 
and that's equal to 1 minus 2 minus 2 cos squared theta. Actually, it's plus because we're multiplying a negative by a negative. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So then I'm left with 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So cos 2 theta also equals 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Additionally, we can go straight in for the um, Pythagorean identity as well and say that since 1 is equal to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, then cos, oops, sorry, cos 2 theta, which is equal to 1 minus, um, sorry, uh, we can say that's equal to, I'll start from the, I was going to do something slightly different, sorry, right, I'll keep on going. Uh, 2 cos squared theta minus 1, we can say that's equal to 2 cos squared theta minus sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Sorry about my messy writing there. Which is equal to 2 cos squared theta minus sine squared theta minus cos squared theta, just distributing out that subtraction, and then simplifying that gives me 2, minus, 2 cos squared theta minus cos squared theta is just cos squared theta, and then we're left with a sine squared theta. So cos 2 theta equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. So there's three versions of cos 2 theta there, that one, that one, and that one, and I promise I'll summarize it on the last, um, as the last part. Okay, so that's the double, it's called the double angle identity because we've got two theta as the angle. And there's a similar one for, for sine. So if we start with um, the Pythagorean identity, and we know the Pythagorean identity, and I'll just do it without the angles um, so you can see what I mean. It's sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. Well, instead of putting in theta, I'm just going to put in 2 theta. So I've got sine squared 2 theta plus cos squared 2 theta is equal to 1. So if I rearrange that, I get cos squared of 2 theta equaling 1 minus sine squared 2 theta. So if I now substitute in for cosine, I can, I can work out um, a further um, rule here. So I know that cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, that's from our, our earlier work. So that means that cos squared 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, all squared, like so, which means that 1 minus sine squared theta sorry, 1 minus sine squared 2 theta must equal 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, all squared. So this bit comes from this line. So if I expand the right hand side, I get 1 squared, which is 1, minus twice the product. So that's 2 times 1 times 2, which is 4, sine squared theta, plus the square of the second term, which is 2 squared is 4, and sine squared squared is sine to the power of 4 theta. And the left hand side is just the same, like so. Don't be scared, it'll all get easier in a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange this slightly. So I'm going to um, add the last two terms to the right hand side. So I'm going to have 4 sine squared theta 
minus 4 sine to the fourth theta on the right hand side and on the left hand side I'm going to have um, I'm going to subtract 1 from here and that means that that 1 disappears and then I'm going to add sine squared to 2 theta to both sides so taking out a common factor of 4 sine theta on the left we get 4 or 4 sine squared theta so we are left with 4 sine squared theta outside of 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to sine squared 2 theta nearly there 1 minus sine squared theta this bit here is just cos squared theta from the Pythagorean identity. So we're left with 4 sine squared theta cos squared theta is equal to sine squared 2 theta. And if we now take the square root of everything left to right, square root of 4 is 2, square root of sine squared is just sine, square root of cos squared is just cos, and the square root of sine squared 2 theta is just sine 2 theta. Or just to reverse it, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. And that's the double angle identity for sine. There is one for tan, but we don't need to know it for this course. So, in summary, the Pythagorean identities we've covered are sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. And the double angle identities, cos squared, sorry, cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta or it's equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1 or it's equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So what these double angle identities will allow us to do is to work out a whole bunch of problems um, without actually knowing um, what the angle is itself. We can simplify a whole bunch of problems um, uh, and equations. So that's what we'll do in class is, is um, look at some examples where we can use these identities